last night you said uh, it's up to all of us to evaluate uh, LeBron's performance. It's up to you to try to do something about it. And I'm wondering, you guys have primarily single covered him, trapped him a little bit now and then. But do you have anything? Do you expect to do something different going forward? Uh, first question, uh, Draymond has back spasms. He should be able to play tomorrow. Um, he's getting getting treated today. Uh, and, uh, you know, we'll evaluate him each day, but uh, he should be okay. Uh, w as far as uh, our coverage on LeBron, yeah, I mean, you have to evaluate everything. You have to, to look at your options. Um, you have to think about, you know, if you take something away, what you're giving up, that kind of stuff. But... Um, yeah, that's what today is about. You know, we've we've lost two games in a row in the series, um, so we have to look at everything, and uh, it, it may mean we we change some things. It may not. Maybe it's something else we have to change. But um, that's what that's what today is about: watching film and and the staff getting together and and uh, moving forward. Yeah. Steve, you were in the same situation against Memphis. Um, how many similarities can you draw between this series and that series? And between games three and four in that series, you, you sat down and watched the, the film yeah. from start to finish. Are you going to do anything similar to that today? Um, we, we might have if we didn't have um, all the obligations over here. So it's your fault, Ann. <laughs> Uh, honestly, it's it's so different in the finals. You know, in the, in the in the earlier rounds, you have the day to yourself. You have you get the the liberty to decide how you're going to spend your day. So that day in Memphis, we didn't even go to the gym. We just went to a ballroom and watched the tape for two hours. Um, tougher to do that now because of all, all of our obligations here. Coming over to the gym, we probably won't watch the whole game. We will watch uh, significant parts of it, um, but uh, the, the the similarity is there. You know. Physical uh, team that slows it down, uh, like Memphis did. Um, you know our our frustration uh, with our pace and tempo is there. Um, so it's it's very similar, and it's it's very helpful that we've been through this process. Obviously, the personnel is different, uh, the teams are different, um, but it's something we've been through, and that is that is a, a, a positive that we can uh, draw on that experience. Front on your left. Tom Haverstrow, ESPN. Uh, you were just talking about the pace. You guys were the fastest team in the regular season, and it seems like they're dictating the pace. LeBron, a lot of ISOs, milking the clock. How do you change that? And did you expect that going in? And just you haven't been able to dictate the pace. Well, yeah, we expected that coming in um, because that's this is the way uh, Cleveland has played um, in, throughout the playoffs. You know, the, the, their pace has been you know pretty slow, and um, their pace has actually been faster when LeBron's been out of the game in the playoffs overall um, so you know he's controlling the tempo he's doing a great job of it and uh, yeah that's what we're looking at you know how can we uh, speed the game up is it you know by you know changing our defense is it by you know what we're doing offensively um, in my mind it's always a, a combination of things it's it's never you know one thing um, but we've got to look at all that and uh, we are we've you know watched the tape already we'll watch it again and um, and we'll we'll figure some things out, but um, you know that's uh, that's that's something that we have to get done. We've got to we've got to be able to get uh, get a little more pace to the game. Two rows back on the left. Uh, Robert Latow, BSO. Uh, Steve, can you talk a little bit about the uh, shooting struggles of Draymond and Harrison? Uh, is it a confidence issue, and what do you think they need to do to kind of get out of that funk? Uh, again, it's, you know, shots come and go. Um, I don't worry too much about whether guys are making shots. It's everything else that we can control. You know, the uh, the defensive effort, the uh, uh, the mistakes that we're making with our coverages or not boxing out um, or, or um, you know, maybe – not not running our our offensive set the way we want to want to run it. Those are the things you can control, and and you know it's a funny game when you when you do those things well, the shots tend to go in. It's just sort of the the, the karma uh, that's involved. Uh, but you don't you don't worry about you know guys making shots, missing shots. That that you know that happens. That's part of the game. Over here on the right. Uh, Steve Stephen Bonney from the New York Daily News. Uh, we we heard about in how '97 um, Michael was motivated by. Uh, losing that the MVP to Carl Malone. Uh, what, what are your memories of that? And do you think it can apply to somebody like LeBron in, in this case? To be honest, I don't even remember that. I mean, uh, Michael used every motivation uh, 
that that he could, and that that worked for him. Um, so I have no idea if that applies here or not. Right here, Coach Noah Kozlov, Cinesport. You talked about controlling what you guys can actually control. Do you yeah. think your guys got overwhelmed last night at times? Overwhelmed by what? By the Cavs and what they were doing on the floor. Uh, no, I don't think we were overwhelmed at all. I mean, we, you know, we, it was a one-point game with a few minutes left. I mean, we made a great comeback. I thought our, our fight in the fourth quarter, our energy was good. I just thought uh, the game got away from us a little bit. A um, couple of lapses defensively in the second quarter. Um, and um, our third quarter uh, was, that was the killer, you know, falling behind. But I, I did, we weren't overwhelmed. Um, we were we weren't at our best. Obviously, we weren't sharp. We found a group that that really started to play and got us back in the game, but we didn't do that for a long enough period. And we've got to we've got to be more consistent. Standing on the left, Carl Stewart from the Bay Area News Group. Uh, Steve, uh, Andrew Bogut has been your one of your primary facilitators on offense, but it seems like Cleveland is is playing him very aggressively and trying to force decisions out of him. Uh, do you see any difference in, in the way Andrew has been able to handle that? And do you have to make an adjustment there? I mean, he hasn't been at his best uh, offensively. We're, we're, we're really good when he's, uh, when he's passing and moving at the top of the circle and then also um, – posting up and passing out of out of the low post and uh, we've had uh, moments of that during the series um, but uh, we'd like to get him going uh, for sure um, it's all it's all part of the process and uh, as we go through the series we'll we'll try to be uh, do what we can to, to to get him in a little better groove as well last two here in the third yeah. row and then Josh yeah Mark Purdy from the San Jose Mercury News Bay Area News Group and Steve it's clear you have the depth advantage with with all their injuries over there why do you think that hasn't shown up yet or is it showing up in ways we're not seeing or is it something that'll show up as the series progresses how do you turn up well, the volume I, on that I would say it, it has shown at times um, you know we we were 11 down in game two with three minutes to go and Got it into overtime. I think um, you know depth could have been a factor there. We were 20 down last night. Cut it to one. Maybe that's depth. Um, I think we're right there. You know we've uh, we're playing 10 guys. Um, they're playing seven. Um, you know uh, can we can we do a better job of of allowing that depth to be a factor? We'll see, but um, it's been our strength all year, and uh, we've got to we've got to keep keep throwing bodies out there, and and uh, over the course of seven games, I'm confident that 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 will have an effect. And as I said, I think it already has. Josh, last one. Steve, Josh Weir from the Canton Repository. Um, how much overreaction is there from one game to the next? You think outside the locker room, and, and do you have to guard against that in, in the locker room at all? Your your players kind of overreacting from one result to the to the next. Well, that's that's how this works, right? There's always overreaction um, to everything um, outside the locker room, for sure. Inside the locker room is where it's uh, m much easier to control uh, the dialogue, the narrative, whatever you want to call it, and um, I think that's what today is about: is putting it in perspective. Um, we're one, one win away from being right back where we need to be. Um, we've been in this situation, as, as uh, we talked about with Memphis. Um, so it's, it's a day to regroup and uh, see what we can do better and uh, you know, get, our, get our heads up and be ready for tomorrow.